Uh, so it's autonomy are an automation technology company. Um, we are UK based but operating globally and we have a software as a service platform which we call the virtual workforce. And the concept is uh, taking people based activity, uh, things that tasks or activities, processes that humans might complete using uh, computer systems, applications, devices, tools, uh, systems in some capacity to complete work. Um, and we, we replicate that using a uh, what's sometimes referred to as a software robot, which emulates what a human would do in order to carry out those, those tasks. Uh, yeah, pretty broad spectrum actually. So we work with um, outsourcers who are providing uh, people-based services to, to clients or outsourced uh, services to clients. We work with uh, system integrators and technology companies. Uh, we work with managed service providers and uh, organisations delivering IT services. Uh, and we work with a whole bunch of end users across various, um, various uh, uh, sectors from the public sector, central and local government, through to uh, uh, finance, um, um, media, uh, telecommunications, retail, pretty much cross sector. The application of, of a virtual worker effectively can be applied uh, wherever a human can, uh, uh, can, can deliver an outcome. So there's a, there's a pretty broad spectrum in terms of applicability. Sure. So uh, robotics is a, um, I guess it's becoming something of a buzzword, certainly robotic process automation has become a, a tagline that a lot of uh, organisations are applying to their, own, to their own technologies or to their own uh, initiatives. But uh, for us, robotics is about taking structured uh, routines and having them replicated by software, uh, to my point earlier, emulating what a human would do. So that means uh, in order to automate, robotically automate a process, the process must be structured, it must be rules based. Uh, it can be very complex, uh, it can consist of uh, a lot of nested logic, you know, if this, then that, or consider all of these contextual parameters before you execute an outcome. Uh, but in order to program a, a robotic automation to do something, uh, you need to give it the rules with which to, to operate. Um, artificial intelligence uh, is, is uh, again, a, a, an often um, overused or misused uh, terminology, but effectively it's, it's allowing uh, machines to make judgment-based uh, decisions or decisions based on ambigu ambiguous data, either through uh, a deep pool of learning and, uh, and, and knowledge that has been built up over time or is uh, farmed or harvested from an external source, uh, or based on a, 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 um, an estimate of ne next best action, for example. So what, what's likely to be the right thing to do, give it a try. Uh, it might be a, 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 an artificial intelligence alg algorithm as opposed to a predefined um, structured uh, decision flow. So quite different technologies, often um, often uh, used in the same in the same sentence and and lumped together. But uh, that for us, that's the, that the, the contextual difference is with robotics. You can always define what will happen as an outcome based on a given set of inputs. Uh, with artificial intelligence, by definition, you, you can't. It's it's uh, the, the the output will be based on a number of a number of factors. So. Um, in a business context, you can imagine that, uh, that automating, robotically automating a process is about giving the, the, the software the rules that your, uh, your people would operate by. So if you take a, uh, a processing centre in, uh, in a financial services organisation, for example, executing final financial transactions, there may be many, many different types of activity they would or, or process they would uh, execute end to end based on the, uh, the instructions they were given or the requirements from, uh, from a customer. They are, th all of those processes can be built on structured uh, rules and, and then nested together to, to, to form a very complex set of automated outcomes. So you can automate all of that structured work and, and have it delivered by a, a virtual worker in our, uh, in our platform. Um, where you might combine artificial intelligence to, to that automated outcome is, is on the ingestion of unstructured input in order to, to define what to do. So take that same processing centre. Uh, if it's being uh, if the ac activity is being delivered from a structured input, you know, here's a form I filled out on the website that tells you what I want, who I am, what my account number is, and all of the transaction detail. It's very easy for a virtual worker to take that input and to, and to use it to inform a, a set of activities and, and, and produce an output. Um, if that uh, initiation of that workflow is from a, a, a natural language conversation, uh, or from an unstructured email, or from a letter that, that, that's, uh, that um, worst case, somebody's written into your, to your processing center, then uh, that can't be processed by a, a robot because it's not based on predefined and predetermined rules. Uh, what it can uh, do, though, is, is, is use artificial intelligence to interpret and extract meaning, sentiment, um, and translation from the information in order to determine what's being Required. So if that's uh, if, if that's a spoken conversation, that's about natural language processing and distilling the conversation down into 
uh, into a set of actions. If it's an email, it's about extracting sentiment and meaning from the, the unstructured nature of the email. If it's from a, uh, a chat window on a, on, a, on a website, then it's about distilling the conversation down until I get to a point of knowing exactly who you are and what you're asking me to do, and then passing that to a virtual worker to, to execute. So the, the way that we've um, the way that we deliver that through, through our platform is through the combination of robotic automation concepts, the virtual worker as an execution of activity, and through artificial intelligence um, and cognitive agents that allow you to manage that unstructured interaction in order to inform the execution of a, of a predetermined task. So we see the impact actually pretty much anywhere there's, there's knowledge work, pretty much anywhere there's white collar workers doing, doing work in computer systems has capacity for, um, for impact through Automation, the, the traditional heartland of RPA, robotic process automation, tends to be high volume, low complexity processing work, your back office processing centers, your customer services teams. Um, actually, virtual workers are capable of doing very highly complex structured work as well. So low volume activity might only happen uh, once a day, once a week, once a month even, but if it's structured and, and, uh, and, um, and rules based, it can be delivered to by, by a virtual worker. So, and the concept of our platform is actually a virtual worker can do anything you ask it to do if you give it, if you give it the process. So the same virtual worker one minute can be processing a, uh, an invoice in a very structured way and the next minute can be a, um, an expert IT analyst um, uh, re re restarting servers because they failed or an expert finance analyst making some very structured decisions and, and, and uploading uh, market prices into, a, um, into an external system. So uh, the capability um, of, of what can be addressed with virtual workers is, is vast. Uh, the impact in terms of where it will uh, have most um, have most value or, or, or change the market most is any, anywhere there are people-based services being delivered. So I mentioned our, our work with the outsourced community. There's a very obvious um, impact on, on uh, the world of people-based services and whether that's local uh, onshore organisations that are providing services based on expert people or whether it's the, the labour arbitrage market of moving um, roles into low-cost locations, uh, you, can, you can imagine the impact of, um, of automating those roles rather than having humans or lower-cost humans do them, uh, not just on, um, on, on the, the operating model of those businesses, but on their, uh, their cost profile, their market profile, uh, the price of those services and the impact, therefore, they have further, further in the industry. So uh, outsource services, but anywhere there are people-based services, whether they're internally or provided by a service provider, will have a big impact. So one of the advantages of this technology is, is um, we refer to it as frictionless. The idea is if you're, if you're teaching a virtual worker to use your existing business systems or the business systems that belong to your customers or competitors or partners, whoever it might be, you're teaching the virtual worker to use those systems using the interfaces that, that already exist. So you don't need to reprogram, you don't need to in integrate systems, you don't need to do any development or coding. Uh, it's a very easy and simple technology to adopt and therefore a very easy technology to um, uh, to iteratively uh, consume, uh, because we are, we are we offer a software as a service platform. Actually, you can configure a new uh, a new virtual worker to act act uh, to, to undertake activity in your business within a single working day. So within 24 hours, you can have a platform operating where a virtual worker is doing things on behalf of you as a you as a business. And that concept of being able to very quickly test, evaluate, and then scale up use of the of the platform um, means that you can you can apply this technology in ways that you couldn't apply other approaches to automation. So, um, given that nature, that ability to to to, to try and then to uh, and then to scale up, our advice to anybody looking at uh, our technology or actually th this market generally is to is to be bold, is to is to is to do it uh, do it quickly uh, and evaluate for yourself. Um, find a proof of value. Something that is that is real, um, that uh, that is going to give your business tangible benefit, and use that as a um, as a as a catalyst uh, to, to to start an automation journey.